Docker Enterprise Edition allows you to run Swarm and Kubernetes workloads side by side. In this video, we'll see just how easy it is to securely add new nodes to a Docker EE cluster. And we'll take a peek at some of the security stuff going on in the background, like Mutual TLS. And we'll see how it all seamlessly integrates with Kubernetes so you can quickly operationalize Kubernetes without a team of experts. So, We've got a Docker EE cluster here. It's got one manager and five worker nodes. In Kubernetes parlance, that's one master and five nodes. And we've got a bunch of Kubernetes stuff going on down here. Anyway, to add a new node to the cluster, we come down here. Now you can see we can add Windows or Linux and whether we want them as managers or workers. Well, I want a Linux worker and this is the command to do it. Now, adding new nodes to a cluster is a sensitive operation especially adding new managers, so you'll want to keep this join token here safe. In fact, this first bit here, this is a hash of the cluster's ID, so it's only valid for joining nodes to this cluster. And the second bit here, this is whether we're going to join it as a worker or a manager. Now, it's really easy to rotate them if they get compromised, but it's definitely best to keep them safe in the first place. Anyway, all we do is run that on a new node here. And it's joined. Honestly, it is as simple as that. But make no mistake, behind the scenes, a ton of important security stuff just happened. So for starters, every new node gets its own client certificate for mutual authentication. That means cluster communications are automatically secured with TLS. You know what, if we run this command here, this is this node's certificate. So the, uh, in the subject field here, the organization is a hash of the cluster's crypto ID. The organizational unit is the node's role in the cluster. This one's a worker, which is right, yeah, we added it as a worker. And then the canonical name here is the crypto ID of the node itself. And as well up here, right, we can see the rotation schedule for the certificate. And seriously, Docker EE makes rotating certificates amazingly easy, and it works with either self-signed or certificates from external CAs. Anyway, the important point, every node in the cluster gets a certificate which is used to secure traffic within the cluster. And none of this gets in the way of Kubernetes. So if I download and configure kubectl, this is just the normal configuration of the client here. Then if I run my Docker EE script to set my context and the likes. And with that done, look, I can just run regular kubectl commands. So this is our manager and six workers, and this will be the one that we just added, which is great, but we can see other stuff too. Magic. Kubernetes and kubectl all working nicely on top of a secure cluster that's automatically configured with smart security defaults. In fact, on top of the secure join tokens and the mutual TLS that we've shown, all kubectl operations get sent to the Docker EE control plane and are assessed against RBAC policies and the likes. So this is bringing top class security to Kubernetes and definitely helping you operationalize your Kubernetes environment. To try out Docker Enterprise Edition for yourself, head over to trial.docker.com.